we, you know, we, we did that album. And I, I, did, I was terrified, actually, to make stages because these were songs that I've loved since I was a little kid. These are songs that are classics, they're legendary songs, which as a singer is always even more terrifying to tackle than songs you wrote. So I thought, okay, well, we had the right arrangements. I felt like it was the right time. And I said, this is going to be a passion project. I'm going to put it out. It might sell nothing. And it sold the opposite of nothing. It did really, really well. And we toured for a little while. And then I could not have expected the domino effect of full circle moments that happened from releasing that album. I was, I was out touring stages when I got a call from an amazing composer named Dave Malloy saying, hey, we're bringing... We're bringing Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812 to Broadway, and you should, you should have dinner and get drunk and talk about being Pierre. And I wound up doing that show, and I grew out my beard so huge for that show. <laughs> I did. It was like so huge. My mom hated it so so much, but like I felt like strangely like lumber sexual. It was very nice. Um, and I did that, and um, I had the most incredible time. Brilliant show, brilliant score, made friends for life. Um, did almost 300 performances, took it all the way through the Tonys. I took my final bow, and I was like, okay, I'm dead. This is all I have, this is it. And I immediately went and started writing Bridges. Now, while I was writing Bridges, I got another insane call from an incredible guy named Andy Breckman saying, hey, by the way, I'm doing a show called The Good Cop for Netflix, and I'd like you to play The Good Cop, which was like, I have to say, like, such a fun experience. I had the best time. I'm so glad we did it. Made friends for life. Learned so much. Had to shave the beard, which I was really devastated by because when, when you know when you finally agree to yourself in the mirror as a grown man that you're gonna like chia pet your face, <laughs> it's it's sad to take that away because you get used to it and it provides warmth and you can hide coins and snacks and it's a whole thing. So. You know, and then after that I wound up hosting the Tony Awards with Sarah Bareilles, and it was like, all of these things wound up happening that were, which by the way, if you've never hosted a live award show, I recommend it, it's pretty fun. Um, it's also like the craziest thing, because everything you rehearse goes out the window the moment you step foot on stage, and or Robert De Niro steps foot on stage. <laughs> Suddenly you're in a dress and you have no idea why, and you're just like, okay, we're gonna roll with it, let's do it. So, um, None of that would have happened if it weren't for the domino effect that started with the album stages. And so um, I would be remiss if I didn't sing a couple songs from that album tonight because there's